445 channel. All right, uh, for those of you on the phone lines, we're now uh, joined by Chris Smith, senior starter for the Cardinals, and uh, we'll go ahead and open it here in the room uh, for questions for Chris. What do you see as kind of the, the differences between the December game and going into the Saturday? I would say the differences are, you know, our team is more physically built right now, and, you know, we're we're playing at a higher level, and everybody has their confidence, and we don't have many injuries on our basketball team right now. Chris, what did you find out about Russ on that trip to the Bahamas when he, he came out and scoring, playing the two a little bit too? You even played some more, I don't know. Yeah, we found out that Russ, you know, he could be, you know, incredible at times, and, you know, he could be, you know, just a regular basketball player at times. But throughout this season, Russ is, you know, he played tremendous, and if it wasn't for Russ, we probably wouldn't have won many games. Do you get mad when he makes one of those kind of crazy plays, or you just know that's part of the Russ package? You know, it's part of the Russ package. Like, you get frustrated at times, but you'll be more happy with him than you know, frustrated, so you can't let it get to you, really. <clears throat> Chris, you've been pretty vocal about being happy to play Kentucky again, get another shot at him. Why do you think it was so important for you guys to go through Kentucky in this Final Four? <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's important for us to be able to play a team like that because if you beat a team like them, you know, you can really contend for, you know, the national title. And playing them is a, you know, it's great, but at the same time, it really didn't matter who we played. You know, we just wanted to get into the Final Four and be able to play on that stage. How tough is it to gauge their length on tape as opposed to actually getting an opportunity to see and play against them? Uh, it's, I would say them on tape is like, night and day difference from in person. Like in person, everybody everybody on their team is pretty lightning quick. They're bigger than what they look like on film. And you know, they're just a, a heck of a basketball team, really. From that standpoint, do you think it helps if you have played them so you have the in-person look? Yeah. Now that we've played them, we kind of know the ins and outs of you know, what they're going to do. You know, most teams really don't change throughout the season unless they, you know, get drastically better. But for them, you know, a couple of guys have gotten a lot better. They've got college experience now. So it's just, you know, for us, we just have to do our defensive role and we should, you know, be fine. What were the hardest uh, principles to, to kind of master with the, you know, the hybrid zone man defense that you guys play? Well, you, first you got to, you know, Talking is the main key to that. Like, if you don't talk, you can't really, you know, figure out ourselves what we're doing. <laughs> it's hard for, you know, other teams to figure out what we're doing. But, you know, as we go throughout the season, you know, which, whatever uh, team, whatever player on the court makes a cut, you know, then we got to, you know, make sure we have a man. How hard is that on the road or, in, you know, places where it's been pretty loud? I would say is for us, I would say we play better on the road because, you know, it's less of a distraction, you know, as of being here because it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I would say a lot of pressure on certain guys and being away takes away the pressure so we can focus in on the task we need to do. When did you first understand how big this rivalry was? I mean, was, was there a moment where you sort of got it? I would say the, <laughs> the first time I seen it was, I would say, with the Marcus Cousin probably elbow swap shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> the face off. You mentioned that you had a dream that you were playing Kentucky in the Final Four. What do you remember about that dream and how did it end? To be honest, I just remember, you know, us battling and then going down to the wire. And that's all I really remember. Then I woke up sweating. <laughs> <laughs> what's it going to be like when you walk into the New Orleans Super Bowl? What's that like? You haven't been in there, so what's it like? It's going to be, a, you know, a great feeling just to know, you know, that everybody – Everybody knows that Louisville, you know, has is there. Like we've arrived in, you know, New Orleans. Well, where were you guys that people were picking against you sort of the last few rounds? I mean, does it seem like uh, things don't change? People are still picking against us, but for us, you know, that's motivation. You know, we're just gonna keep our heads high and keep it going. Try to keep rolling. What has to happen? What has to happen in this game for you guys to beat them? What do you have to do? You know, I would say, you know, we just have to. I would say pretty much rebounding the basketball way better than we did last game. I think we got out rebounded by 26, and 
you know, for we have Shane and Gorgie playing well, and you know, Peyton is rebounding well also, and myself and Kyle will have to, you know, include in the rebounding. Chris, Coach has talked a lot about how through the season kept saying, we just want to survive, we want to get through this, and then come full season, we're really going to turn them up a notch. Did, did you guys have faith in that? And, and as you got into the biggest tournament and started winning, was, was there a time when you, the realization really hit that he was right, we can do this? Yeah, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of faith in each other. And Coach, you know, he pushed us, he pushed us, you know, beyond our limits, and he got us to where we wanted to be. And every, what everybody wrote down on paper is coming true. So, you know, we just, like, everybody kept their confidence throughout the season. So that was that was the main thing, really. Did you talk about how important Shane's been, especially in Phoenix, and uh, how much of a difference maker he could make on Saturday, given the foul trouble that he was in the first time you guys played Kentucky? Yeah, Shane, he, he, Shane kind of changes the game because it's not too many, you know, post players in the country that play on the perimeter and, you know, is his size and his strength is like tremendous. So like you can't really, it's hard to stop Shane when Shane is playing like Shane Van. When you guys got back, I mean, what has been different? Are a lot more people talking to you and saying stuff on campus? Like how crazy has it been? It's been, you know, it's been really crazy. Like people that I've never even spoke to before in my life have like came up to me you know, hey, what you doing? Like, <laughs> wanna laugh and joke? Like, you're playing great. You know, okay, now we're friends. <laughs> so, but I mean, like, me being a people's person, it doesn't really matter. As long as people are the same every day, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really affect us. Let's pause one moment just to <clears throat> ask on the phone lines. Are there any questions for Chris Smith? Okay, we'll open it back up here. Chris, going back to Shane, you guys got off to that hot start, and I think after the Memphis game, he kind of came out and said he thought you guys were the number one team in the country, could possibly go undefeated. And then after that, you had the Georgetown and UK games back to back. How have you seen him mature since that point to grow into the player he is right now? I would think, I would say, you know, teams have to go through adversity during the season to be, you know, pretty, pretty much successful. If you can overcome it, you know, it will prevail like we did, but for Shane, I think Shane has learned to keep his mouth shut. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> for being a young guy, you really shouldn't, you know, speak out and do things like that because, you know, it's kind of just, you know, arrogant really. But for Shane, you know, he's he's grown up. He's became a man in the last in the last three or four weeks. He's became a man. Any questions for Chris? Anybody? Hi, Chris. I'm uh, Josh Newman from Asbury Park Press. Um, obviously, you know, your brother is a guy who's had a lot of success at the NBA level, but he never went to college. Is this kind of you having one up on him now? I would say we have one up on each other. <laughs> and, you know, him being in the NBA is like I'm living through him, and me being in college, he's living through me. So it's both a, you know, a great experience for both of us. Have you spoken since uh, you guys advanced this far, and, and what has he told you? Any type of advice on like the big atmosphere and things like that? No, he's. We talk pretty much every day, and you know, he said to stay positive. You know, things will go your way, and you know, don't let too much bother you because he's been through a lot of adversity himself, so he knows how it goes. Thanks, Chris. Anyone else here? Chris, as a shooter, how different is it? I mean, you played it in the carrier zone. How different is that even with the depth of perception and stuff? And how important is it to get in there on Friday and get some shots up and get a feel for it? It's really important because, like, like you said, the the backdrop is is really deep, and you have to <coughs> kind of find a, a in between, you know, from with your arc and know when to make it fall short, and you know, the pretty much just the perception. If you could. If you can shoot it, you can shoot it anywhere, so it doesn't really matter though. You get that low arcing shot, does that help you or hurt you in that? Well, I just have to adjust it during the, pretty much throughout the, the next couple of days. Well then how many are you going to make? <laughs> God willingly, hopefully I'll make them all. <laughs> Anything else for Chris? 
Great. We'll pause just a moment. Hopefully, I've seen the hand in here next. <laughs>